مولانا شیخ حسن کم سفیر I feel bad If I sit on the floor they cannot see me That's the problem أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوية الأربعين نوية الاعتكاف نوية الخلوة نوية العزلة نوية الرياضة نوية السلوك لله تعالى العظيم في هذا المجد أطيع الله وأطيع الرسول وأول الأمر منكم As we were describing yesterday that وارث المحمدي the the inheritor from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not he was before he became the inheritor of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was one of the saints that Allah has built has raised them up and make them saints by his favor it's not because by their worshipness but Allah's favors on them made them special and through them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigned in the day when we were souls in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of promises he assigned for every time every century not really century, but when one, one of these saints pass away, another saint replaces him. So the number is always 124,000 saints, although they might be more in number from time of Prophet Sallallahu to the Day of Judgment, they might be more than 124,000, but they are 124,000 at a certain time when someone pass away, another one replaces him on that on his place. Similarly, Waris al Muhammadi, who is the Sultan of Awliya, also has the same position uh, that he will be picked up by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, irada, wisdom. He will be picked up for, for to be inheritor from Prophet وسلم, and that's why Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, when he described Sultan al-Awliya, he said that there is Sultan al-Anbiya who is Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he is like a, a golden brick this is how he described it described that he said Sultan al-Anbiya is like a golden brick facing it instead of saying brick I like to say mirror because Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the mirror of every appearances in this life. And Sultan al-Awliya is the silver mirror that receive all the reflections that come from Prophet, it will come on his screen and then it is reflected everywhere. What, what, what we mean by a mirror, as I heard and as I knew many times from Mawlana Sheikh Nazim al Ranshi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we say someone was asking me what is the meaning of astaghfirullah al-azim min kulli dhanbi wa ma'asiyyati min kulli ma yukhalifu deen al-islam means oh Allah I'm asking forgiveness from you to repent from everything that is against Islam against tariqah, against sharia then we say against azima then we say against haqiqah and ma'rifah so uh, what what that mean? Here comes. We know what is Islam. We know what is Tariqa. We know what is Azima, but we don't know what is reality, the Hakika and the Marifa and the knowledge. The Marifa and the knowledge is what Awliya Allah bring to you, because Sharia you can learn from books. You can learn from a scholar. Tariqa you can learn, you can understand what is the meaning of Tariqa and the meaning of initiation and follow and discipline and etiquette and protocol of, of uh, the Tariqa or the Sufi order. But Marifa and uh, Azima is means to take it with all its hardship, whatever you are facing of hardship. But Marifa, knowledge, 
and hakika reality that is not for everyone that is we cannot take it except from the mouth of of awliya Allah cannot be taken except by by through them from their mouths from their hearts as they say uh, when someone wants to learn Quran to read Quran you cannot learn it by yourself you have to read it from someone who has been authorized to teach how to pronounce so it, 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 it says that Quran can be taken only by the recitation and the mouth of reciters similarly reality knowledge uh, reality haqiqa and uh, knowledge ma'rifa cannot be taken except from the mouth of awliya Allah that you can hear and they can put you on the right track put your put your train back by by their computers back on its right way so I heard from Grand Sheikh and Maulana Sheikh Nazim many times and I knew that from them that everything when Allah created creation that creation still is within that crystal lamp that never came out what came out is the reflections that's why here uh, you cannot uh, you cannot see except reflections of realities and one time he said why why the heart is on the left side everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is right side everything right Prophet forbid to eat from left he said eat from the right hand uh, Ashabul Yameen Ma Ashabul Yameen Rahim وَأَصْحَابُ الْيَمِينِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْيَمِينِ فِي سِدْرٍ مَخْضُودٍ وَطَرْحٍ مَنْضُودٍ وَظِلٍ مَمْدُودٍ وَمَاءٍ مَسْكُوبٍ وَفَاكِهَةٍ كَثِيرَةٍ لَا مَقْطُوعَةٍ وَلَا مَمْنُوعَةٍ وَفُرُشٍ مَرْفُوعَةٍ إِنَّا أَنْشَأْنَاهُنَّ إِنْشَاءً فَجَعَلْنَاهُنَّ أَبْكَارًا عُرُبًا أَتْرَابًا لِأَصْحَابِ الْيَمِينِ ثُلَّةٌ مِّنَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَثُلَّةٌ مِّنَ الْآخِرِينَ وَأَصْحَابُ الشِّمَالِ وَأَصْحَابُ الشِّمَالِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الشِّمَالِ في سموم وحميم وظل من يحموم لا بارد ولا كريم إنهم كانوا قبل ذلك مترفين وكانوا يسرون على الخنث العظيم وكانوا يقولون إذا متنا وكنا ترابا وعظاما أئنا لمبعوثون أو آباؤنا الأولون قل إن الأولين والآخرين لمجموعون إلى ميقات يوم معلوم. In summary, it's too long. أصحاب اليمين are the people who are the the right that Allah سبحانه وتعالى loves the people of the right means the people of حق. أصحاب الشمال Allah called them the people of باطل of of falsehood. Ashab al yamin Allah described them in, in, in they are going to have all kind of shade, all kind of paradises, all kind of heavens, all kind of rivers. He explained all that in the part of the verse of Ashab al yamin Ashab al shimal he described them that they are the people of hellfire, the people who they are going to have only food for them is uh, poison and uh, sulfur, boiling sulfur, boiling iron, boiling minerals in order to burn them every moment. So, uh, but someone might ask, okay, why then the heart is on the left? Because the heart in reality is on the right. But the reflection of the heart from like a reflection when you look at the mirror you look your left, right, and your right, left. You cannot see except left, right, and right, left. <laughs> so in reality, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the human being a heart that always on haq, always right, on the right side. <laughs> Physically, it is on the left side, but in reality, it is on the right side because it is on haq, and the main source of the heart is on haq connected with the day of promises 
that is present in the Allah presence. That's why Awliya Allah, they say that human beings always are, never came out from the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but only their reflection, because Prophet is the mirror of the divine presence. So everything appeared through the mirror of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa came, and that's why what you see today, as uh, Imam Ghazali said, what you are seeing is not the reality. The reality is, as Muhyiddin ibn Arabi said, when whatever you see is not the reality also. It's this thing that you create within your mind. Everything is imagination. When you die, that moment is, you can see reality. Can we die before our death? Yes. Tariqa is to make your ego to die. When the ego dies, then you can see. That's why Prophet ﷺ said in the holy hadith, as long as my servant approaches me through voluntary worshipness, I will love him. Allah is saying, I will love him. But you have to approach means you have to do the hard way to go, keep going, keep going, keep going. Then Allah loves you. When he loves you, he said, I will be his ears that he can hear with. I will be his eyes that he can see with. I will be his hand he can sense with. I will be his tongue that he can speak with. I will be his feet that he will walk with. Means I support him completely. So Allah, they knew that reality. They knew the reality and they want to put us back on track to reach our, uh, our uh, reality in the divine presence. The reality is the real, the real one, the false one, means the, the imagination, imaginable one. Now we are the imaginable one. When the imaginable one disappear, only the real one appear. Awliya Allah are trying through all these gatherings and these meetings and this uh, uh, spreading of tariqah all over the world in order to put as much as they can people on the right track and tell them that reality and knowledge are within the divine presence. Nothing came out. That's why Prophet ﷺ is the mirror that reflect out what we are seeing. And Sultan al-Awliyahu is the silver mirror reflect back what the Ummah are doing. What his, because Waris al-Muhammadi is not only for a group of people, is for all awliya, he is the head of all awliya. So someone must be lucky if he can take bayah with a waris Muhammad. It's not simple, it's not easy. You might find thousands of awliya, as we said, 124,020, but you cannot find except one waris Muhammad. That's why many people, they say, this is a murshid, this is a peer, this is a, is this, this is what you call, many different names they call them. I was invited one time, the recently, two months ago, a conference in Los Angeles, and I asked who is coming, and they sent me the name of people coming. First, Alama, Mausua, uh, Peer, uh, Murshid, Grand Mufti, uh, uh, Saab, <laughs> Professor so and so. All six names like that. I was surprised. From where they got all these titles? What is Muhammadi? He doesn't like to have a title except Khadim al Fukara. The servant of Fukara, servant of poor people. We are poor. And he say, I'm Khadim, we are poor, and he say, I'm the servant of these poor. He is happy to call himself servant. Can we call ourselves servants? No way. We are uh, big uh, peacock sitting on uh, chairs, like a balloon, you know this balloon that goes up? What you call it? <coughs> Heart, what? Hot air balloon. Hotel? Hot air balloon. Whatever. <laughs> Going up. One, one, uh, one bird, if comes and pick it up, uh, pocket, 
goes down finish. All these uh, big uh, scholars that they are sitting and they don't see anyone except themselves bring a, a needle and punch, then they will finish it completely. One, one Prophet وسلم, was in Mi'raj. Sayyidina Musa asked a question, and I will quote Maulana Sheikh Nazim. He said, Prophet وسلم, Laylatul Isra wal Mi'raj, Allah ordered all prophets together, and Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, prayed two rak'ats Imam with them. That's Laylatul Isra wal Mi'raj, which is coming Tuesday evening. This Tuesday evening, coming Tuesday, it's going to be Laylatul Isra wal Mi'raj. So, Prophet was praying, and Sayyidina Musa asked, Oh, Ya Rasulullah, the seals of messenger, I have a question. Always Sayyidina Musa has the questions. The whole, in the Quran, you can see Sayyidina Musa asking questions, Sayyidina Muhammad did not ask one question. Because the Prophet was completely submitting to Allah's way. Sayyidina Musa, of course, submitted, but he likes to ask questions. There are some people, they can inherit that uh, that uh, characteristic, like they ask too many questions. Why to ask questions? Surrender. Leave questions to the creator of questions. Because if you want to ask questions and they want to open from, for you from their oceans, you will be drowned. You cannot survive. You will be like a, 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 a you, you will lose your mind, you will be on the mountains. <coughs> That's why they don't like to, awliyaullah, they don't like anyone to ask questions. Because they like to give that knowledge, but they give it with a, you know the baby, baby when he is sick, they give him with a, uh, what you say, dripper? Syringe. 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 Then to his mouth. Little bit. And the child happy sucking it. Awliya Allah, not even give us syringes. Might be they give the whole ummah one syringe. If they want to give from what they know, we are already be not sitting here. We'll be sitting on the mountains, all of us. <coughs> Everyone will leave his work, will leave his children, will leave his wife, will leave, will leave everything. Because this is how Sahaba, they left everything. They gave to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all their lives. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, when, he, when Prophet asked Sahaba to support the army at that time against the aggressors, they brought in front of Prophet whatever they can. And he asked Sayyidina Abu Bakr, what you left for your family? He said, I left Allah and do ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nothing else. I gave everything. He asked Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he said, I left half to my family and half to you. He said, your Iman is half of his Iman. So Sayyidina Musa asked, and he said, you said that ulama ummatika anbiya bani Israel. The uh, uh, scholar of my ummah are ka, ka anbiya bani Israel, means they are in the not in the same level, because prophets, no one can be their levels. Allah honors them with. But their knowledge, Prophet وسلم, is describing them that they are going to be so highly respected. Like the uh, uh, prophets, how they've been respected in their time. Ulama al-Ummah, the scholar of the Ummah, they are going to be highly respected. Not normal scholar, but awliya Allah, whom Allah gave them knowledge. And he said, how you can say that, Ya Rasulullah, can you tell me I want to learn, I want to know. How a, someone become like a prophet? And it's very simple, Sayyidina Al-Khidr was doing things that Sayyidina Musa was not able to take it. Because 
Allah gave him a certain kind of knowledge to Sayyidina al-Khidr that he did not give to Sayyidina Musa. That's why between the murid of the Shaykh, like Sahaba, look, how many, how many hadith Prophet Sallallahu has mentioned in his life? How many Shaykh Hassan in his life? According to Imam Bukhari, he took the most, most uh, authorities one, the most uh, authentic, very, very, he, all of them authentic, but he wanted, he collected this hadith that many, many of the Sahaba has mentioned. So they came around 4,000. Imam Muslim might be 8,000. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal might be 15, 20,000. But Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, he was saying, I was memorizing 300,000 hadith that Prophet said. But not one person said them, not one Sahabi said. Every Sahabi said something that this other Sahabi did not hear. So Prophet sallallahu sometimes he usually speak to 10 people or 100 people. Next day, those people gone to their work might be another 100 people come speak to them different ahadith. So when you accumulate them together, you find a lot of ahadith being spoken. So that's, that's, that's why awliya Allah, what Allah gave them and what you, they give to you is different than what they give to him. Don't say what he says is wrong if he heard it from the sheikh. No, he gave it according to his lover. And he gave to you according to your level. And he gives to him according to his level. Everyone has a different level. Not everyone are on the same level. They are on the same love. Maulana loves everyone equal. But everyone has a different capacity to, to take knowledge. So he was explaining. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at Sayyidina Musa and said, I'm going to show you one. At that moment, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi ordered the atom, the zarra, the reality of Sayyidina Imam Al-Ghazali in that association. And Sayyidina Musa asked him, what's your name? Everyone will ask you what's your name. Yeah. Sayyidina Musa, because he asked too much, he wants to ask him what's your name. In, in, Abi, in, the, in the association of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Laila to Isra' or Mi'raj, doesn't need to ask. He will, knew, he will know his name, but it's, it's, that's why I said it many times. When Maulana asks you a question, dunya question, answer. Don't say you know better. Dunya question, answer. When he asks you spiritual question or uh, uh, tariqa question, say you know better. We don't know. Although he knows the dunya question, but he doesn't need to you waste time to know it, to spend energy in order to know it. Give it to him, easily. Spirituality, what do you want, to speak in front of an ocean? Say, I don't know, you know better. I explained that before. So Sayyidina Musa asked Imam Ghazali, what's your name? He said, my name, my name. He didn't say, uh, if I ask you my, your name, he said, what's him? But he said, it's me. He began with, my name is Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Muhammad. Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Muhammad. Abu Hamid al-Ghazali. He was able to say that I am Muhammad uh, Abu Hamd al Ghazali. He said, Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Muhammad Abu Hamd al Ghazali. He mentioned the whole name with, with going back all the way to Prophet <coughs> in his lineage. Sayyidina Musa looked at him and he said, Subhanallah, I asked you your name. You were able to say 
حامد الغزالي أبو حامد الغزالي فينش why you are it's it's like someone wasting time wasting time for what you have to mention all your names you can mention one name and that's it you mentioned all the way all your lineage I didn't ask you about your lineage so means you already falling into a something that is inaccept unacceptable I don't want to say incorrect or wrong unacceptable it's not it's not necessary subhanallah it looks like you are uh, I, not, not ignorant but waste of time and my time and your time I asked your name, you mentioned your name, your father's name, your grandfather's name, and your son's name, Hamid. Because you are the father of Hamid, Abu Hamid. So why, for what? You give me your name directly. And then, Imam, and then why you have mentioned all the lineage to Prophet? As if you want to show yourself that you are connected. For what? Well, do you want to give your ego something? And Imam Ghazali said, Oh, Sayyidi, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, you are from the five prophets, Ul al Azm, the strongest prophets. And you are in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the masters and the seals of messengers. This is the highest honorable level that I as a human being can be there is nothing more to me to, to be happy with <coughs> who, who is not happy when Prophet ﷺ is calling him and introducing him to Sayyidina Musa and to our two prophets I was so happy but I will not tell you why I mentioned all this until you tell me a question, answer to my question. When Allah asks you what is in your right hand, I'm reciting. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> فألقاها فإذا هي حية تسعى قال خذها ولا تخف سنعيدها سيرتها الأولى He asked him, well, Allah asked you, what is in your right hand? You begin to describe what is in your right hand. Allah doesn't know what is in your right hand. Say my stick, my cane. He asked why you are going to say I lean on it? I use it for my flock to keep them on track. I, I have many other jobs to do with it. And he begin to mention all of them. Why you did that? Why you mentioned all this? He said because it was the most honorable level that I can reach when Allah is asking me, I want to delay, to delay my, uh, 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 conversation there because it is the most honorable place that I can reach. He said, Ya Musa, Ya Sayyid, Ya, ya Sayyidina Musa. This is what we call Maqam al-Tashrif. The honorable, huh? Station of honoring. The station of honoring. Allah honored me to speak so I delayed it. I said more. He said, okay, the Prophet asked me and this is also Maqam al-Tashrif for me. This is an honoring uh, station for me, so I increased as much as I was able the presence in Prophet ﷺ presence. He looked at him, he was smiling, and he said to Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ, if all your ulama of your ummah is like that, I am witnessing that they are. فَأَنَا أَشْهَدْ عَلَىٰ قَوْلِكَ I am witnessing what you have said that the, uh, the scholars of my ummah is like the prophets 
of the people of Israel. So, before we end, we want to say that we are in Maqam al-Tashrif. We are in that highest uh, dunya level that we can be honored. Although it's all, it's a very simple, poorly, uh, structurally built with all its village, village uh, touch on it, with all its uh, miserable weather here, and uh, with all the difficulties and hardship people are seeing, are feeling, but it is spiritually, it is the most honorable and honoring level that a person can reach in this time in a presence of Sultan Awliya. Oh. So don't try to question, ask questions, don't try to complain, don't try to argue with each other. Submit because you are in the presence of someone that he is 24 hours in the presence of Prophet Sallallahu So any moment you are around, you don't need to be 24 hours stuck, but here like glued inside, but you are around, you keep the presence of Morana Sheikh in your heart. It's an honoring place. He is the silver brick, as Muhyiddin Ibn Arabi said, Allah. which I say silver mirror that reflect from the light of Prophet Wasallam to his student and to humanity. So it is honor for us that we are in such a presence that we must, we will not regret it all our lives and we will see its benefit. If we are able to submit and to kill our ego and to reach the level of as Prophet Sallallahu said, if someone wants to see someone died before his death, before his death, look at Abu Bakr al Siddiq, that his ego being killed. If you want to see that in dunya, you have to cut completely your ego. If we cannot, which is very difficult, it is going to be in the death time on the seven breaths when you are giving it out, and in the grave, and the day of judgment. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Keep all murids of Maulana Sheikh together, healthy and uh, long life for them, and to for Maulana Sheikh to have long life, in order that we can be together with Mahdi alayhi salam and with Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. Bi hurmat al Habib, bi hurmat al Fatih. Wa min Allahi tawfiq wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.